All right, time for another little experiment here. Which I generally see all my pieces as experiments. Well, maybe not every one if I'm talking about some kind of specific um, concept in stamping, but when it comes to the compositions, they're quite uh, they're quite free form. I might know what images all most of them I'll be starting off with, but um, during the process, I really don't know where it's going to go quite often. <clears throat> and when dealing with a new medium. <laughs> Everything's really up in the air. So, a lot of the technique will be created during this process, hopefully. Okay, so, um, kind of warm tones, in addition to some cool tones here. I have some Moonlight Duo um, stamp pads here, and hybrid inks, okay, if you don't know. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to do this generally a cool tone scene, but I, I think I might want to incorporate a little bit of yellow. And the idea that I have concept is kind of a break in the uh, the clouds with some warm light streaming through. I have these birds that I want in my foreground here. There's a uh, a uh, monthly challenge on the uh, Stampscapes group that I don't always participate in, but I always mean to get around to it, but I don't always. But um, it's birds of a feather for the month of. January, and I wanted to do something in that spirit here. Okay, so, um, breaking the clouds here. This might be ugly, you know, <laughs> in terms of my um, attempt here at some kind of general idea. I really don't have a strong concept as far as the visual either, so um, it might be pretty, pretty bizarre. Okay, this is just a paper towel. And what I've found is, I don't like these first um, layers that I put down with this. In fact, I, I find it really to be pretty uh, pretty bad in terms of a uh, technique, okay? But this is just kind of like an underpainting or something like that, if anyone's ever done like oil paint or something like that. You know, so a lot of times if you're doing something, you, you just lay down a general wash and that's kind of the concept here. I don't know if this image, this this color scheme, or first layer, I should say, is going to be completely buried, but um, uh, I think a lot of it will be somewhat obscure. Okay, now I'm trying to take this and going back in perspective, this will be kind of my source of light right here, so I'm trying to keep that in mind just in general. So I'm keeping like a vanishing point right here. I'm getting a little bit off track. Maybe I went too much in this way, but um, just going like this. Okay, now here's the thing here. If you're following along with this lesson, um, turn your paper kind of in the direction that's the most conducive for that angle of mark that you're laying down. So, so it's something like this. You don't always have to have this right side up and going like this, you know. Just turn it in the direction. Keep your motion of your hand or whatever applicator you're using. You can use a sponge or whatever. Whatever is the most comfortable. I'm using the paper towel here just because I know most of us have that on hand or something similar. It could be a rag, you know. I'm thinking, actually, fabric would probably be better, like an old t-shirt type fabric, maybe. Okay, so I'm looking for this kind of center area and creating my um, light source, okay? If it's not perfect here, I'm not worried about it. In fact, I doubt if it will be. I don't even know what perfect would be in this case, because... I haven't really done this scene before. Maybe I'll just make this whole corner my source light. Okay. <laughs> That'll be easier than try to come in, like, right here. All right. You're going to end up with a lot of, like, those types of things in, on your piece. Don't worry about it. You know, I, I think we'll have a lot of this filled in. I, you know, you can do this with dye-based inks too. By the way, I'm going with my matte 
side of my paper. This is actually glossy cardstock, but I'm just using the matte side. Uncoated and whatnot, but this is 10 points, so it's nice and stiff. I wish it was 12 point, but I'll just <laughs> I always tell people to get these days because I bought like several reams of this at one time, and it's just like they really last forever, and I'm not one to just kind of stop using it and buy another one when it comes to something like that. I, I feel like using it up, so... Uh, just applying it in. You can do this with things like pan pastels, too, or something. You know. um, whatever you want. Could be colored pencil or something like that, even. Of course, if it's wax, you might run into trouble when you're inking over it. Um, so use whatever medium you're using. Just uh, use the um, do the um, the process accordingly. Okay. You know, if I'm going to stamp something over something in water-based media, in other words, I probably don't want to have like a big bunch of alcohols already laid down. It probably wouldn't stick to it. You know, or if you're doing things like pigment inks, you know, something like dye-based inks might not stamp over pigment inks very well, so you just have to do things kind of in order. But, as far as this look goes, if you want to go for this look, which I find, you know, reasonably dramatic, I don't know, doesn't look like a little kind of explosion of light or something. Utilize your dry versions of this too, see that right there? So you see, I'm just, I'm not re-inking real often. This goes for things like dye-based inks, too, when I'm doing that type of technique. I, I I just keep it nice and light, and I go for repetition, okay? And that's what keeps things easy. When people go, when people try to rush things and go really dark too fast. It usually doesn't come out as rich because you're not applying as much color, and it's usually a kind of more precarious exercise unless you're really kind of a adept at doing, you know, real spontaneous types of marks like a maybe like a, a calligrapher or a, you know, some of those Chinese brush painting types of things, you know. Uh, that's really uh, that real spontaneous, very quick thing. Watercolors, you know, or something. It's awesome, but um, I don't know. It wouldn't be something that I'd, you know, be, uh, be good at. Because I don't, I don't practice that, so. Okay, going with a darker tone? Okay. Yeah. I'm going to try to... I covered up really too much of that, but so be it. But see, what I'm doing is I'm trying to keep this a little bit narrow. So you see, it's it's tapered, so it's like kind of narrow, and then it lightens up on the sides. So it's not just a big, thick streak, you know, that's real sharp. Okay, so see this right here? Coming in like this, and then kind of blending it into that previous color a little bit. And kind of a little bit tapered. So see, it? this one's up here, but then I'll, I won't go into here. You know, just in general. I, I, I mean, I might go into it a little bit, but I don't have to go into it with a a strong thing, I can do it like that. It's really super light, okay? And naturally, you know, your your uh, paper towel will start fraying, especially on the edge of your card where it's catching the edge, but I mean, who cares, you know? We're gonna toss this out anyways after. This isn't even a full piece of paper towel, it's like a, I don't know, like a quarter of a sheet or something like that, so uh, not something I'm worried about. Okay, now as this goes on, see I have to get used to these things, I, these pads and inks, types of inks, this hybrid inks, so um, it starts building up on the on the surface. I actually don't have a lot of fun putting down that first color, but I know it's kind of the step that I get to to get into these darker ones. Um, I usually work light to dark, but I really love the feeling um, of these inks when I get into like that second and third layer 
provided I put down an adequate amount on my first layer, okay? Because what happens is it starts building up on the surface and it becomes real kind of malleable. I can kind of move these colors around because they are surface um, oriented. You know, the more you put down. The first layer might have kind of absorbed into the paper a little bit more. But then when I put on these other ones, it feels real, I don't know, kind of thick, like I'm moving like wet paint around or, or something like a, um, oil pastels, maybe, you know, something very surface oriented. Could be dry pastels too, but I don't know. When I do this, it feels more like oil pastels to me, something a little bit more kind of wet, okay. All right, so that is that. Boy, I'm starting to really wonder about that green now, because I kind of like the way this this is gone. This is what I was talking about, you know, in terms of changing up. You know, I might have to change up at some point in time. Okay, all right, maybe not. Maybe not go with the yellow. Let's let's try uh let's try these greens right here. Let's try to blend some of those in. Okay. So this one, this one is uh, Martian green, okay. Now, if you haven't used Mart, you know, um, hybrid inks before, I mean, this is not like the technique that you're supposed to be using with them. I, I don't know, I just found it pretty conducive, you know, in terms of uh, laying down these, I don't know, kind of freeform types of uh, layers. I thought it was kind of cool, and they they have the ability to do that, and I like going for um, kind of these freeform background types of uh, looks um, with dye-based things, and they, they, this has a different type of uh, kind of look to it, in that same technique, so I don't know. I like seeing the variations, so that's what I'm doing. I, you know, I have a feeling. You know, most of the the dive, these inks are supposed to be made. You know, you're supposed to be making impressions with it, but but you can also use it like just uh, you know, nice uh, a nice medium to. This is kind of a form of sponge on. You know, sponging you to sponge on to a, a piece or. You can probably even take a paintbrush and, you know, get some media out there and, you know, paint really light applications of it onto uh, your, your stamped imagery to color it, so. Okay. Galactic green. Okay lighter yellow green. I have to get used to these too in that um, you can go somewhat light over dark like that. Yeah. I don't know, it doesn't look real light, but um, it just, I don't know, it, it there's this somewhat of a chalky kind of feel to them. It has a chalky feel when it's um, kind of dry like this when I'm coming out here, but when I first ink up and I go on, it's more like an oil pastel or something like that, like a wet um, streak of, of chalk or something like that. That's what it feels like. All right, I'm kind of closing in right here a little bit more. I thought that was too much white there, so into it a little bit more. I'll just have to squint the glare. <laughs> that uh, it's, it's looking starting to look really bright to me. All right, let's go. I've decided to to go into the yellow. This one's not. This one's sunshine yellow. Well, I guess it's supposed to be sunshine, but. This one to me looks like it has, a, it's a little bit more 
ochery, like an earthy yellow. Let's let's see how it goes here. Yeah, it has a little bit of like orange in it, so I'm not sure how this will mix. I usually go for something a little bit more um, like a neutral yellow for in here. Because it starts moving into orange, it starts moving into another spectrum. So that being said, why don't we just remove a lot of this ink? So you can just go for a really light streak, and then if you like it, you can always add more, right? That's what I always tell people. Okay, so you can work with this color right here, and not that color. This color right here is much easier to kind of ease into uh, a certain color scheme. Actually, that looks really good down here. It's kind of filling in some of that area that was a little bit kind of anemic looking. All right, actually, that that works fine. Actually, that looks really good out there, doesn't it? It's, uh, it's much richer in terms of a kind of surface color. I don't know if I like that part, or I just put it on right there. Over here it looks okay. It's almost getting too light though. I might come back into it with a darker tone. So you, just, you know, if you do this, kind of keep those little fingery types of things. Everything's turned uh, completely green now. It's not super smooth, but I like the texture. Uh, let's see. Do I have a... Okay, here we go. Let's see if I had a darker blue. It's kind of a purplish one, though. Deep, sp uh, deep space blue. Let's see. Use this. Is this the one I used earlier? I don't think it was. Yeah. Doesn't matter. I guess you can keep your paper towels and use them, you know, again. You can use them for a certain color, I guess. Okay, so this is dark blue. That's pretty dark blue there. I kind of needed that, though, didn't it? The darker you make, you know, a certain application within a piece. It doesn't have to be scenic stamping, but by contrast, the lighter areas look one step lighter, okay? Because you're taking that area around it and making it one step darker, so. A lot of drama. Okay, here we go. This is what I really like on here. It's it's when you let me see if I can show this. You see that? Where it's kind of you know, there's that streak of blue, but then you get kind of that um edge. It's like this edge built up here of ink. Where it's kind of I've kind of moved it. It's like it's like, a, you know, sweeping something into a corner. It's kind of built up there a little bit. As far as I know, it, it seems to um, retain that look when it dries. See that right there? I mean, I, I can have it hard like that, or you can kind of, you can feather it in too. See how that just blends out? So it's it's kind of whatever you want. It's real... I can manipulate those marks because everything on here is kind of, I mean, this isn't like super sopping wet or anything like that, but it's, it's really open to <laughs> uh, movement. You can move these colors around. It's, it's almost like it's kind of floating on the surface right now. Yeah, that blue really helped out.
But see that? I mean, it really went green. And these hybrids, I mean, I can just... You can really take it back to blue or whatever color you want. I don't know if I could make it red or something like that over the top of it, but it's just kind of, uh, I don't know. That aspect to me is fascinating because I just haven't, you know, done that before. So um, with dye-based inks, it's just not in the cards for, for that media. Or is it supposed to? Dye based inks, you know, colored by staining. So, okay, so that is the. That. I'm kind of wondering if this will accept um, stamped impressions over it in the form of some clouds. I might want to try something like that. Okay, let's. Okay, well, here, let me. Let me apply some of this pigment ink first. Um, I'm going to go with this white pigment ink. I might do some blending. Okay, so this is white right in here, but I'm going to go into it with the white and then bring that white out. So the colors I came in from the outside like this, and the white all come from the inside out, inside of the, the rays. Okay, so it's not just um, a negative space right here. We'll physically add in some white into that area. Do you know what I mean? So instead of it just remaining white, because I just didn't color it, let's actually physically add some of this white into it. Okay. And I'll take this and I'll blend it kind of out like this. And we'll see how that goes. I wanted to do some masking rays too, and I'll show you what I mean by that coming up here a bit. Oops. Now see, I've come into this blue. I've swiped into this blue and it's come up on my thing, so I got the blue right there, but let's see. Let's take some of that out right there. It's kind of like erasing it. I'm kind of, now this is really like, like I said, it kind of feels like pastels in a way it almost acts like pastels because if you come into it, it gets on your applicator, so I need to be kind of conscious of that. See, as I streak into here, maybe I need to go back in and, uh, you know, blot it off a lot. Okay, well, why don't I do this? I'll come in this area right here and get some of this down first before I do these longer streaks. Kind of uh, trying to come up with some, you know, applicable techniques right here. Techniques require, or new media and techniques require kind of a exploration. Look here, do you see that? Where that white is kind of coming in here. It's opaque, well, translucent. Kind of coming in like that. Okay, now let's let's try some um, some additional forms in here. Um, I could keep it hand on it and forget the uh, the beams. I, I think I am going for some beams though in here. All right, so this is really fun. This is a fun technique right here, but um, I do need to come up with a really definitive vanishing point. Okay, now use these. I don't know. I guess you could use the ragged side, but I'm going to use the straight side of this. Oh, let's just let's just make the uh, 
my vanishing point, that corner up there, that'll be easy. And I just come in like this. Okay. And I will create this beam. I don't know if I want that to be my vanishing point. I might want it to be right here instead. Uh, I'll just use now. Here, I'll do it real light. I'll make it with the yellow pen. I'll put my vanishing point right here. Okay, so it's really barely visible right here, but I can see it. There's this little yellow dot right there. Okay. Okay, so that being said, um, I'm just going like this, and we'll have these emanating, you know, like these crepuscular rays coming from... from that dot, okay? And I'm just going to use a cotton ball. So, so here's my beam. And I will I will start it um, from there and kind of come down this way like this, this, like so. And you get that beam of light like that. I'm, I'm keeping it kind of light right now. I can kind of make some a little bit more definitive, but Let's just go with this right now. Okay, so I use a little bit more towards the source of the light, okay? Just in general. And then as I come down here, I kind of taper it off. So it's uh, uh, kind of a transitioning um, strength beam. Okay, see that right there? This one's a little bit stronger than the previous one, but the variation is good to have. It doesn't match my other hand-drawn beams, but so be it. We'll just kind of layer it, you know, so there's some variation go going on. Would I prefer it being perfect? Probably, but I, I don't know. It's not something I really think about. I always like to be curious, um, kind of about the direction something's going in. I could be distressed about it, you know, for sure, just like anyone else as I'm working on these types of things. But I do have a curiosity as how something's going to look in the end result, which gets me sticking with something. If I just started the scene and I saw those initial streaks down, you know, I mean, they didn't look good really at all. But, but I do have a curiosity, so I stick with my, you know, scenes just to see where it'll end up, and if it can, kind of be resolved in a <laughs> acceptable um, end visual. So I always recommend kind of just you know staying with your pieces working on them, and it's like, okay, it might not look great right now. And you might not know where you're going, but, um, you know, let's just see what's on the next step, and just concentrate on your next step. And then work on the next one, so it's like a, you know, constant uh, kind of process of, um, I don't know, I don't know if it's, it's not really problem solving, but kind of an exploration. All right, so here's that other beam. With this beam right down here, I went into this one. Can't really see the transition of it too much, but um, let's see. I make, I make them different widths too. I find that works really good.
All right, now pigment ink dries darker than what it usually looks like going on, but I'm not real familiar if it dries darker on things like hybrid inks. I know they dry darker on um, dye-based inks, so you have to go a little bit lighter, as I always tell people, than maybe what the ideal situation looks like when freshly applied, so... Um, so I'd usually recommend going a little bit lighter than what you think you'll need, but I don't know on this one. We'll, we'll see. coming out. I don't know. Maybe we can use another one down here or something. I don't want to make them too regular either. I'm kind of... Um, I like to vary them in kind of spacing. Oh, look at this. I can let's do this streaking thing this way and see if I can taper it. All right, new technique. Huh. Okay. You just saw it here. I just uh, developed a new kind of look for me, at least. Okay, so you go like this, it it streaks really beautifully and easily because it's on that hybrid ink, so um, just go like this instead. So it's a little bit lighter over here. Source of light, and then taper it off down here. I don't know if I'll do this for all of it, but all this all those beams, but okay, let's go like that. So this one, the difference between that streaking and this one is just dabbing, so there's different textures. Okay, if I'm, if I'm streaking it, you have to put it in kind of direction, the direction of your hand here. Okay, and just take it back like that. better too, but I have that big blotchy area up there now. It has to get kind of blended. Oh, I need a new clean sponge here. That's one of the dangers of going over the hybrids is that you pick up that ink and it makes it darker if you keep going like that, I guess. So, uh, Learn something new all the time. So that's another problem. Okay, so I need to come in here, dab in like that maybe, and then streak that down. Is that it? Yeah. This is going to be a scene with birds, but... Um, If 
if you did um, some aquatic plants or something like that, wouldn't that look like a, uh, I think it would look somewhat like a, uh, you know, a scene from uh, an underwater scene. Yeah, those streaks, I, I see what happened here. That streak went dark because I streaked it down here into the blue and it picked all that up, so I need to come in here and add more white to that part of it, that beam. All right, so note taken on that. Okay, stick out here. White and then streak it, something like that. All right, so it's a, a light beam, not a dark beam. strange working kind of in this fashion because I'm usually, you know, by the time I get to this point, the inks have been affixed to the paper, you know, dye-based inks, they stain the paper, but this is, I've got all this media on the surface here that seems to still want to go back into solution if it, if it's allowed to. So in other words, when I go over it with this, it just wipes right onto this. I guess this is one of those things too, you could do things like spray fixatives, you know, or workable fixatives where you can spray on here and then come back on maybe with, you know, other types of um, um, touches and whatnot like those beams, but uh, I think that looks okay as it is. Okay. Alright, so I think that's a decent background there. Uh, let's go for this black. Actually, speaking of this black right here, let's use some of this too. I'll just use this green pad here. And let's, let's kind of come back into it again with a little bit of a darker tone. So I've kind of made my beams lighter this way. Now let's make the streaks coming back that way a little bit darker. And I'm doing that because I'm going to going to stamp out my images in black over the top of it so I want some other color to match that so let's do it you know so we'll do it with black I'll come over I'll come over some of these light beams too just to kind of mellow them out a little bit just so they're not so stark like that see this down here now see it's transitioning a little bit more Let's do this right here. I'll transition that one a little bit more where it kind of fades out on the perimeter. So that doesn't look that look better kind of having it transition slightly. dramatic, I think, as I add more. One thing I'm doing a lot with this new medium, kind of underestimating how much of something I'll use. I'm finding that I, I'll i use a certain amount and I really like it, then I, I use a lot more than kind of what I would have expected to, just based on, you know, what I usually do with dye-based inks. Okay, it's just, I don't know, it's just a different process. I haven't, I need to get into the mindset of these, so. Um, I haven't really done that yet. You know, it'll take a while, you know, to kind of fully explore things, but, well, I don't know if I'll fully explore it, but, you know, explore it to a much um, deeper degree than I 
have in, you know, whatever, four or five scenes with this, which isn't much at all. I'm probably using them very unconventionally, too. Okay, I don't like what happened right there. It looks all smudgy in that black, but... Let's see about going back into it with a little bit of green again, huh? Yeah, no problem. Look at that. It just kind of blends it right in somewhat. I'm kind of blending in some of that black, too, but it looks pretty good, I think. Actually, that looks pretty good there. Look at that flame there. That edge, huh? This, it seems like it could use that. There's a little bit of a stronger glow now. So what we've done is we've gone hybrid, pigment, and then going back to hybrid, so. So it looks like we can go back in and further influence those areas. Look at that. I don't know. It, it might look like that when it dries, too. I'm finding that these pieces with the hybrids seem to kind of retain the look that they had when you freshly applied these me this media. With dye-based inks, they, they'll dry differently um, depending on um, depending on what ink, what ink brand, line, whatever, and what paper you're using it in conjunction with. But uh, this one so far looks, it seems to look like what it looks like um, when dry. At least on the pieces that I've done. Let me just go back to that black again here. Now I feel like I'm putting on like shoe polish or something on <laughs> something. It's getting so built up here. That's that's what comes to mind. All right. I guess I could save these. I don't know. Okay. I'm tempted to... I'm tempted to use a little bit of the Dr. Martens in here. Just go for a crazy kind of a textured piece. Like this explosion of light, you know, where the light's kind of, you know, a little bit, I don't know, alive or whatever. And dimensional. So I have these two birds in different sizes, but do I want to... Let's go ahead and go for it here. Let's let's use a little bit of text. Oops. <laughs> Dr. Martin's Bleed Proof White. An opaque white watercolor paint. Okay, and a toothbrush. I'm going to get a little bit of paint on that toothbrush. I don't have it just soaking the whole thing. It'd be too much, uh, you know, for, for what I'm going to use it for. And then I'm just kind of removing a lot of it just because I don't want big blobs on there. Okay. 
With this paint, you often have to reconstitute it. If you have it sitting around, just add a little bit of water to it, but I've been using it you know, a decent amount lately, so I don't need to do that. Okay, so let's start in the white area here, and I'll kind of splatter it outward. When I'm talking about doing this, it shows people even like five feet away from me kind of start backing up, but you know. We have a little bit more control over it than that. We're not just going to go like, shh, you know, like that. Okay, let's see if we can see this. Okay. Barely see it. Maybe I can remove too much. Can you see that there? Isn't that fun? It's a nice little. It's kind of a nice look to it, isn't it? Look at this. This looks like a look like looks like a like a deep space object, like a or I don't know, Northern Lights or kind of like a gaseous nebula or something. I'll put to try to put a little bit more closer to my source of light here. Now this is it it poses a little bit of a problem because these little dots on here they dry really fast, but they're kind of raised dots. But I'm going to be stamping over this with hybrid ink, so it's pigment ink, so it's a little bit thicker. And I, if I was stamping it over with dye-based things, sometimes those things kind of show through. And they might show through the hybrid one, but, you know, I don't think it would be any big deal. But let's take a look at this now. Isn't that fun? Look at those beams, too. I like the crisp one in conjunction with the kind of freeform ones. But I had to go back in and rework these things a lot, so you kind of lay them down, something happens, and you go back into another ink. But this type of ink I'm finding allows us to do that, okay? Um, because it's real surface oriented. It starts just laying on the surface of the paper so you can kind of manipulate it around. But look at that. Okay. So anyway. Um, All right, the duo pads come with this um, white pigment ink there for, you know, a real specific type of um, application of a uh, medium, media, to stamp. So I don't have just a, a blank. I mean, a uh, just a straight black hybrid one. So I'm just going to use the same duo ink pad, so I just, what I'm getting at is I, I can't just ink it up like this, otherwise I'm going to get the white in there, so I'm going to be careful just to ink up the black hybrid ink on my imagery. Is that coated completely? Not sure if I got some of them. I'm just being really conscious of that. Okay, so. I have tack and peel on my uh, acrylic block here, so it sticks to the. Uh, Um, acrylic block, my unmounted rubber sticks to the acrylic block, no problem. God. It is so nice to have something that can stamp over white pigment ink, okay? I couldn't do that before with dye-based inks. I don't know, the Versafine, the Versafine should work just fine. Maybe, I don't know, maybe it's the the hybrid aspect, maybe it has some dye-based ink in there, as well as 
the uh, uh, pigment ink, so I don't know. It, it seems to give a pretty, you know, crisp impression to me. What do you think? But wouldn't that be cool with like fish or something like that? That's like the top of the of the water too. Okay, let's go for the smaller size just to create a little bit of a depth within the, the piece. I'll put them a little bit higher up usually. I mean, with birds you can put them lower, or higher, or whatever, you know. Usually when it comes to like land imagery, the higher you put something, the farther back in the distance it is. Um, by relation. Okay, but with, when it comes to birds, they could be lower. Okay, there was one little dot in that bird, but I can fill that in with a pen. That's where I, I think I stamped over like a, you know, a larger Dr. Martin dot splatter dot. about some trees down here. I might just leave it as is, though. Um, but I think this one would be perfect for a quote, perhaps if the quote is the right size. But let me look for a quote stamp and uh, see if anything seems appropriate. And then I'll come back. Or maybe I'll decide if I do want those trees in here after all, kind of like lower trees down here. I might not have stamped those up high enough, but I might just leave them as is. Okay, I think on this one we have uh, some that could fit really well. Nature always wears the colors of the spirit. I mean, this one you know, has these really strong greens here. And I also want something really horizontal because this is a horizontal format here. And I've left some area up here that I think would be perfect for a quote. That's about the right size, too. But I don't know. Um, nature does not hurry, yet everything is accomplished. There's some, you know, this... But I, I don't know about that one. Um, I think it would fit pretty well, though. Music in the soul can be heard by the universe. I think it takes into account the, the piece as a whole. Okay, A picture is a poem without words. I want something a little bit bolder, though, in terms of my font than that one. Okay, but here's the one, too, that I, I don't know, find... The most fascinating to the mind that is still the whole universe surrenders. I think that would look pretty interesting right up there. But I think this one looks good too. A good traveler has no fixed plans and is not intent on arriving. I think that looks really, that would look pretty good there. And it's also fits the, I don't know, that the visual theme of the piece I find, but I don't know that. To the mind that is still, the whole universe surrenders. That one looks pretty good too. I could probably do it. I can do that. Boy, if I stamp that out in white down here, that would look interesting too. I hadn't really considered that. Or even put it over here, even. Music in the soul. Hmm. All right, I, I think several of these would work just fine. Well, yeah, maybe three, I think. Three stand up. So I'm going with the Lao Tzu one. I don't know who that is. Chinese philosopher, probably. Okay. All right. This is a cling foam version of the scenic sentiment. <laughs> I need to get used to it sometimes. I, I touch the surface before I, you know, I was expecting it because most of the stamps I use uh, you know, are, are mounted here, unless they're wood mounted. But uh, I just come in contact with the paper a lot faster. So do a quick 
test print. Get my pressures down correctly. <laughs> if you're, you have a stamp positioner, probably a good idea to, to use that. I don't, I don't have one or use one, so I don't know. So far, I've been reasonably lucky when you, using this. I don't know. Okay. go. I went with that one. I am still contemplating whether I want some of these trees in here like that. I've used these a lot in pieces. I think I'm going to go for the simplicity of this, okay, and leave out the uh, the trees. I don't know, it seems like a more kind of poetic here, um, just to leave out the uh, additional things. But let's make the um, let's let's add a little bit of variation in here, okay? I think we can use a little bit more variation. And in terms of visual interest, the um, the dots that splatter painting made a big impact, I, I believe, in here, don't you? With those stars. Okay. But let's let's vary them a little bit now. Okay. Or add some variation to that background. All right. So let's go with a. You can use a white gel pen. Most people have the white gel pen, unless you get so uh, discouraged with using those that you just kind of gave up. But um, this is a white paint pen here. I'm not sure what pen I used for that right there. But the white paint pens, the acrylic white paint pens, are pretty good. Um, yeah, that one's really. I have two of these out. Maybe this is the one I've been using. I haven't. Sh one of these I haven't shaken up enough. I don't know. Maybe I'll use the white gel. We'll see. What oh, okay. There we go. See, that's the way it's supposed to look. It has that little ball in here. So one of these is kind of brand new. And one of them I've been using. So. So the ink and binders really kind of mixed together. Thoroughly and sufficiently. Okay. So, let's take this and add a few larger dots. It'll, maybe it'll look like the, the rays are coming out more uh, towards us a little bit more. If I come kind of larger down this way in a couple areas, see those larger dots? Come out here. And I'll add in some others in here. So it, it's kind of giving a little bit of dimension and depth within here in a very small element. So we're saying that some of these dots are really small and they're probably farther away. And these larger ones are closer, so you don't always have to have, um, you know, something real kind of obvious. Like these birds are smaller, so they're farther back. You know, I don't think people think, okay, these ones are closer, but they're just, you know, they're you know, sparrows or something like that. Where these ones are, you know, hawks or I don't know, whatever. So you can kind of work your scale. It's the, kind of the repetition of scale type of uh, thing happening here, which gives kind of a nice visual continuity to, you know, your pieces or, you know, any type of design, interior design or whatever, you know, the, you go into a model house and there's 
you know, they use the same color scheme throughout the house, or there's a repeating type of pattern or color scheme, or both. Well, this one's just these little dots here, but you have kind of larger versions and smaller versions. Okay, I need to be careful not to touch that text there. That's something that I found that I've been doing or touching something on these uh, pieces done with the uh, hybrids and I end up kind of picking up a fingerprint or something like that on there. Okay. Okay, so let's take a look at this next step here and take a look at it. Those varied marks, you can see the larger dots, right? So that's kind of random too. That's the hardest thing to do, is to kind of just keep it random. We all kind of pattern things. I think it's hardwired into us. Where, like, If we're doing small dots, um, like with a gel pen or something like that, or whatever, with a paint pen, everything's like a quarter inch apart. It's like all of us do it. I do it. Most people that I know. You have to kind of consciously group things. That's why something that's nice about the Bleed Proof White is it's a little bit more random, you know, when you're splattering it in there. Okay, so that is that. Uh, let's take a Q-tip now, okay? And here's my kind of instructions on this. Go for a very dry application of this onto your piece. Take some white pigment ink, okay? And really blot it out, otherwise you're gonna be using way too much, okay? It doesn't look white. I'm, I'm tapping it into this pad here, and I, I've had black in there before. Okay, let me go with a little bit of a cleaner one here. These these duo pads are meant to be to use some of that other ink from the color in here, okay, to get some these variations and different values. But uh, I am going to go with the clean one here. Okay, let me see what I have here. See, there's barely any ink there. That was like, I don't know, seven taps or I don't know, whatever. And it barely shows, so like one tap. See, that's, it's like almost like nothing. See there? Now, I'm not squashing in there. You want to go like this. Now, here's 15 taps, and it has that little haze right there, okay? Now I show this on every scene that I ever do, but I'll show you what people do. Um, they go like this, and then they go like that, and they say, oh my god, I got these big blobs, you know, which is kind of understandable. So, it's all about the process of uh, kind of very little, kind of without the entire process right here, you just kind of build things up very lightly, like that, okay? And that's what we'll do around some of these larger dots, and they'll hopefully look like they're glowing. Okay, so, kind of, if you want to, I kind of fray my tip a little bit and make it softer, blot it down, smash it down a little bit. And then after a few taps, you get that nice glowing little dot. And see, that surrounding area is translucent. You don't want a big, full blob of that ink. You want to use a little bit of that, you know, that pigment ink. Okay, let me make some of these in the beams a little bit lighter. Okay. I'm starting to see this uh, technique incorporated more into people's pieces, and I think it looks great. Um, and it's not just scenic stamping. It's, uh, you know, with a lot of different things, just kind of translucencies when you use, you can get a lot more mileage out of your existing media by just using lighter versions of it, drier versions of it, kind of like dry brush touches of um, 
inks all of your colors of ink. You can go for a lighter version of it just by using a drier version of it. You can do multiple impressions. You can stamp something, you know, word stamp in a dark blue, stamp it off on your blotter paper, stamp it onto your piece, and it's, you know, some lighter version of that blue if you wanted a lighter version and you didn't happen to have a lighter version in an existing pad. Just do a lighter version of your darker one. All right, so see those little glowing little balls of light? It's kind of fun. They're really fun to, uh, to create, too. All right. I think that looks fine. And this came out, to me, better than I was expecting, especially with that freeform kind of application of uh, media. I really didn't know what to expect. Um, but here's what I discovered in this piece right here. It's just... I'm kind of figuring out things as I go along, but it's just in laying things down, going over the top of it, laying something over the top of that, I put these beams of light in, but then I was able to go back in and blend those out too. And then, you know, if I didn't like something, then I can just go back you know, with a, like a light green like this. If I put light green over there, it's not going to make that look light green, but it gives me some incarnation where it blends in pretty well. Oops. Uh, I'm just going to use some <laughs> the white here. It's a little bit blobby there. See that little area that's a little funky looking? Let's go back in and add a little bit more white pigment ink to that area. Cover up some of those blotchy marks that I made. So, so it's this really, I don't know, it's this kind of circular process. You can kind of add add more, cover, and then go back in to a previous one and blend in a little bit more. So that's really fun uh, to me to be able to uh, find something like that out. Um, and it leaves things a little bit more open. Let me see if this will show up here. Uh, the green gel pen doesn't stand out too well, but I can get little green dots in here. Probably more of a, uh, like a pastel would show up in here. Since this is a green composition, you can use you know, green gel pen um, little highlights in here within the theme. It kind of just adds another little Kind of fun aspect. I don't know, you can do all kinds of colors in here. Blue look good too, because we did use the blues in here. We didn't, didn't turn out too blue, did it? Did it? Oh yeah, let's take a look here. All right. Sometimes I don't adjust my camera, but that's about right, right there. Um, a little bit glary like this, but uh, anyways, three stamps. I mean, it's a lot of handwork in the background for sure. But um, things like the, uh, the sharper media, I think, really looks good in here. Meaning those crisp little dots of white are really fun. Like I said, a lot of people don't have Dr. Martens, but you can, if you have some kind of splatter, you know, paint or something like that. I don't know what pigment ink, some people have like liquid pigment ink. If you spray it in here, it'd probably be a little more translucent than opaque. But that might look good in there, though, you know, and you can use your white gel pen. Try a silver pen or something like that, too. I don't know if I would go crazy with it, you know, really stand out. But um, I don't know, fun things that we can do, discovering new things all the time, and techniques, and just trying to figure things out. But um, this piece was a lot of fun, and uh, I don't know. You kind of, I kind of get obsessed with uh, trying new things. I'm going to be thinking about this uh, kind of layering for uh, as I've been again for for a while and whatever I want to do next. But always curious to see. Okay, so anyways, thanks for watching.
Hope you enjoyed the piece. And if you like it, hope you uh, pick up some of these types of inks and try it for yourself. It's a lot of layering and a lot of fun.